the sites along the way. This is a high-end cruise line with mostly older clientele. The food is top-notch. The people watching, not so much. <laughs> Hungry? <laughs> Starving. That about summed it up for a lot of things that hot summer day. Entering the dining room, Lenny led me to the table near the large floor-to-ceiling window. It was a deuce, set for one. I couldn't help but think how lonely two weeks at sea with a bunch of seniors would be. He'd been living this solitary life for a week already, with another to go. Poor Len. Mm -hmm. When a drop-dead gorgeous cocktail waitress appeared, <laughs> with legs longer than linguini, it dawned on me that on a ship with a thousand passengers, that had to be hundreds of young men and women tending to their needs. Waitresses, chambermaids, and showgirls. Oh my. <laughs> Poor Len indeed. Wearing a baby blue button-down shirt which accented his eyes, Lenny didn't shift his gaze away from me for a second. Not even when the leggy linguini girl delivered mm -hmm. our wine. <coughs> his head would have his total attention and what appeared to be his appreciation of the tight white scoop neck jersey I had donned for his viewing pleasure. Struggling to make conversation, both of us were clearly nervous about where things were heading. I'll have the Chinese chicken salad, I said, grateful for the waiter's interruption. <coughs> Without skipping a beat, Lenny added, I'll have the same. A couple in their 70s approached, wearing matching sailor outfits. <laughs> the wife was nudging her husband. Sorry to interrupt your lunch, the husband began, glaring at his wife. We really enjoyed your show last night. Thank you very much. You were wonderful, <coughs> felt the wife in heavy accented New York Jewish. So, you got the 20 bucks? Lenny added with a wink. I hope you enjoyed your cruise. We've decided to stay aboard for another week. Can't wait for your next show, the wife said as her husband waved her away, pulling her on, his, pulling her on the way. Hell, now I have to write some new material, Lenny whispered to me, but he was only half joking. Even though I was famished, I barely touched my food and, and noticed Lenny hadn't eaten much either. I suspect we both had other things on our minds. I know I did. Would you like to see my quarters, Lenny asked, after coffee? Your nickels and your dimes, too. <laughs> <laughs> you taught me well, Kimosabi. Do you have a staff cabin? Well, it's more like a staff infection. Oh, right back at me, Annie. Yes, it's a passenger cabin, but don't be too impressed. Wait until you see the size of it. I can take a nap, shower, and dress without moving. <laughs> I figured he was exaggerating, but as he unlocked the door, I discovered he was not. Yeah, it was the tiniest room I'd ever seen. The closet, and I use the term loosely, three hangers on a chopstick, was on the immediate right. <laughs> the bathroom opposite on the left was about the same size. Sitting on the bowl would force one's knees into the shower. One additional step straight ahead put us in the living room, dining room, bedroom, which consisted of a desk the size of a toddler's, bearing a lovely fruit, fruit basket which took up its entirety. A tiny chair was pushed underneath, and if pulled out for sitting, there wouldn't be any floor space at all in the room. A TV hung from a bracket on the ceiling, facing what looked like a smaller than usual single bed, resting against a wall with a porthole. Despite its size, the room was very cheerful and bright. <laughs> Welcome to luxury at sea, Lenny offered good-naturedly. It's everything I imagined and less. <laughs> but I meant it more to be funny than anything. Tiny or not, I was duly impressed. Lenny was off to exotic ports on an extremely luxurious liner. This cabin held little purpose other than to sleep and mm -hmm. yeah, that. <laughs> How do couples live in this space for a week? Well, this is why most cruises end in childbirth or divorce. <laughs> <laughs> this is a single, Lenny continued. Double rooms are at least six inches larger. <laughs> Sitting on the bed, because there wasn't much choice, we were straight backed with our feet touching the floor. We were about to change the course of our relationship and we both knew it. That's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. So I jumped him. <laughs> Mid-kiss, we rolled a bit too far and fell off on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing, we got back up and tried again. The bed was so small, there was no leeway on three sides of it. Lenny's elbow caught my hair. Screaming from the shock of it, I totally freaked him out. As he tried to straighten up to apologize, I yanked him back down. Mm -hmm. Within moments, our history unfolded with our clothing. Mm -hmm. Just as I had foreseen the inevitable, so had Lenny. Ironically, some condom company had done a promotion at my opening night. Lenny had grabbed a handful of freebies from the men's room and had them handy. 
Despite having little space for creativity, we sure had fun. <laughs> Exhausted and satisfied, I rose to freshen up, embarrassed by my nakedness in front of Len. Uh-oh. What's wrong, I asked Artie inside the tiny John. He didn't have to answer. Along with the two glasses of wine I'd had for lunch, out popped the condom. And as if that weren't enough, it was broken. So much for freebies. It was more stress than a love affair needed. Calmly, I freaked the fuck out. <laughs> Lenny didn't know how to comfort me. It was the worst possible time of the month. <laughs> it was the worst possible time of the month. I'd have to wait two weeks before knowing if there were to be consequences for my actions. Actually, I was seeing Barry the next day. I'd begin payment immediately. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Sexiest Man Alive theme. I remembered the face. I knew the name. Born in Frankfurt, Germany, growing up in Toledo, Ohio, Sandy Hilberg moved to New York where he studied with Sanford Meisner at the Neighborhood Playhouse. Starting out doing stand-up, um, I hope you were better than I was, and I'm sure you were. He was part of an improv group that worked clubs in Greenwich Village, and I know you were better than I was at that. <laughs> Moving to Los Angeles, he was an original member of the Los Angeles, the Groundlings, with yeah. Lister. Yeah. And Tracy Newman is not here today, but she's so funny. How funny he is. Oh, God, yeah, Tracy's just sick. She's always here, and she's sick not to be here. She's recording her new CD. Um, Mainstream recognition came with three Mel Brooks movies, High Anxiety, History of the World Part One, and Spaceballs! He also starred in The Hollywood Nights and Up the Creek. Sandy wrote and starred in the short-lived TV series The Lorenzo and Henrietta Music Show and the 1979 CBS TV series Flatbush. He's made numerous guest appearances on TV shows, including Trapper John, M.D., Remington Steele, Newhart, The Jeffersons, M.A.S.H., Married with Children, The Wonder Years, Night Court, The Jeffersons, Knight Rider, Too Close for Comfort, Get a Life, House Calls, Sybil, Days of Our Lives, among others. You can tell he's one of us. Yes. <laughs> Sandy has also co-starred in the NBC miniseries, miniseries Harold Robbins, 79 Park Avenue, and the CBS movie of the week, More Wild, Wild West. <sighs> Here's a little something for your trivial pursuit. I did not know. Sandy was the original gopher in the Love Boat pilot. I did not know that. <laughs> He's been married to Harriet Helberg, who uh, warned Lynn to watch him with the hot babes today, by the way. Um, he's been married since 1975. And he has two sons, Mason and actor Simon Helberg, who bangs big. Or he's in the Big Bang. <laughs> anyway, please. Welcome, a man who puts a duh before everything he writes on Facebook, and I haven't figured out why. The incredibly funny Sandy Helberg. Woo!